Hello, my name is Daisy Abbott and I'm based at the School of Simulation and Visualization. This is the first in a series of short lectures on personal and professional development or how to succeed as a student. The purpose of this first lecture is to encourage you to engage with your course fully by engaging in personal and professional development or PPD. This will allow you to apply your knowledge both within your study and outside your course in your hobbies and in the rest of your life. If you engage with these techniques, it will help you to develop complementary skills. Um, it will encourage you to read more widely and it will help you to develop a purposeful approach to your study. It will help you to succeed both in an academic context and in the rest of your life. Why do we want to concentrate on PPD? Well, students who engage and integrate well tend to do much better in assessments. That's the first reason to engage with this lecture. Uh, but it also gives you an outlet for your interests and passions. It helps you to broaden and deepen your CV, giving you a really well-rounded skill set by the time you leave university. And it also helps you to identify and then apply in your studies a scholarly approach, which will add rigor to the work that you do with the associated benefits for your grades. We're also going to try and help you manage your time and effort well, and overall to help you feel better throughout your student journey. What is personal and professional development? Well, Professional growth is about gaining new skills and experiences relative to the workplace or to your study. So it's about developing the skills you need right now, but also setting goals for whatever you want to achieve next. Personal development sits alongside professional growth. New experiences will help you to handle any anxiety you have about studying, to take on more responsibility over your learning journey and to succeed with greater challenges. And importantly, this also includes looking after yourself, looking after your mental health and your quality of life alongside the workload of your course. So the overall aim of PPD is to help you manage your learning journey and manage your growth throughout your studies. A quick word about the expectations uh, which go along with a taught course at university. So a significant amount of time in higher education is expected to be used on self-study and independent learning. And I'm suggesting that you use some of this time formally for your personal and professional development. So a quick idea of the figures, a full-time student is expected to study for about 35 to 40 hours per week. This varies depending on the program you're on. So just as an idea, if you're taught between 10 and 15 hours a week, that's face-to-face -face teaching with a lecturer or a tutor, you might then expect independent study of at least an hour for each lecture and at least two hours uh, practice for each lab session or studio session that you have scheduled in your timetable. So that's about 25 to 30 independent study hours each week. One of the ideas of this series of short lectures is to help you to maximise the benefit of these 25 hours. Um, there's no point putting in all that time if you're not using it efficiently and you're not using it well and in a focused way to develop the way you want to develop. So we're going to be looking at techniques for working smarter, not harder. One important thing to note at this stage is that you are not competing with other students in your cohort. There is a huge amount to gain by collaborating with other students, both formally on assessments, as you will be asked to do, but also informally outside of, of, of formal of, of group work um, and to work together with the other students on your program to make sure that you maximize the, the benefit and the peer-to-peer the -peer learning that you're going to be doing. So don't think of it as a competitive exercise. Your grading is not competitive. Uh, so make sure that your attitude is not competitive either. Finally, the time you spend sleeping and working and exercising and relaxing, it's just as important as the time you spend on your study. And it's really crucial that you use, that you don't neglect these other activities that will help you to maintain a healthy study and life balance. 
So how to do it? There's a short, small flow chart here, um, which will guide you through the process of setting PPD goals for yourself. So the first step is to set a goal. What is it you want to achieve? This could be something quite complex, like learning a new skill, or it could be something quite simple, like do the course reading for next week's lecture. So set first, set the goal, then come up with a plan for how you're going to achieve it and then find opportunities for when you're going to enact that plan. Finally, you're going to measure your progress and how you measure your progress is against the goal that you set yourself in the first place. So I advise at, at the very least writing these goals down with some success criteria. This will help you to assess when you reach the end of this process, whether you've achieved the goal or whether you need to go around again and learn the next step of the process. I want you to spend a minute or so thinking about your extracurricular activities. Pause the video here if you like. So these are extracurricular activities that you're already doing, not something extra that we're expecting you to do, but something you're already doing. And let's have a look at the types of activities you might already be doing. We've got watching TV, playing games, learning a new skill in a, outside of a university context, reading books, reading blogs, something creative like writing, painting, coding, singing in a choir. You might be using social media and connecting with friends and family. You might be doing some exercise. And finally, and not to be neglected, is how much time you're spending thinking or worrying about your university work. So now we're going to look at how we can scholarify these existing activities to complement your study. So let's look at consuming media, watching TV or games or books. And um, when you consume media, try and do it critically. Try and be selective. Choose something challenging to watch next or to read next. Choose something that's got an innovative format that you maybe haven't experienced before. Don't just watch the same old thing. As you watch or read or play, critically analyse the media that you're consuming and how you're consuming it. Is there something interesting there that you can apply to your study? So actively try and relate your media consumption to the course content. And if you want, reflect on it. Keep a, a, a log of, of the media you consume with a few, just a very quick few bullet points on what you found interesting about it. Is the narrative construction particularly interesting? How did it work and how did it make you feel? And you'll find that practicing these critical skills when you're doing something that you're already doing, like watching TV, will really help you to develop a scholarly approach to your university study. If you're creating something, so you might be creating games or creating music, or when you're using social media, critically analyze your process. How does it relate to your course of study? How does it relate to what you're learning and, and what your tutors are asking of you in this week or in this month or in this module? Again, reflect on the process, make notes uh, in whatever form suits you. And maybe challenge yourself by creating something new or different. Um, you might take something that's being asked on your course and use it in your personal creation. Um, is there something that you wouldn't have done otherwise, but you can really have a practice at outside the, the confines of a, a formal assessment for your course? If you're learning things, and again, it doesn't matter the source of learning, it could be from, um, from a book or from an online source. When you learn, make sure you're very selective about what you're choosing to learn. Concentrate on learning things that will directly complement your course and your stage within that course. So if you're looking ahead to something that you might be doing next year, maybe try and learn that piece of software in advance. So when you're choosing to learn things outside of university, how can they complement your study? You might want to join online communities that support your learning interests, um, from a, something as simple as an email mailing list to a Twitter community or a YouTube channel that, that's particularly aligned with your course and your area of study. Have a think about how this relates to your overall practice. How are you learning to complement your overall practice? And is this formal? 
as part of your course of study or informal. And then you might want to make a list of learning priorities and have a look at what's coming up. But what are your priorities right now for what you need to learn and write them down and then use the flowchart that we looked at previously to, to convert these into learning goals. You might want to leverage your free time, time that you currently spend doing something uh, like commuting or exercising. Can you leverage that to, to really uh, maximize the hours of learning that you can access and give yourself a little bit more time for relaxation? So you might be listening to uh, an audio book while you go running, or you might um, be composing something in your head while you're swimming in the pool um, or looking at a blog while you're on the bus, that kind of thing. And finally, um, if you're thinking and worrying about university, how can you capture this activity to improve your work life balance? The idea is you shouldn't be thinking or worrying about university in a way that is not constructive. So how can you convert these thoughts into a constructive uh, plan for your learning journey? So plan your life carefully around the, the constraints of your course, but also what you prefer to do in your spare time. Uh, anticipate the workload bottlenecks that are coming up. You can look at the schedule for your course and you can look at when work is due to be handed in and anticipate times when you might have a more heavy workload and make sure that you plan your life around those times and make sure that you keep some time set aside for having fun, for doing things that are nothing to do with university. So if you find that your free time is filling up with worry, take action, make a plan, and then your free time will be free of concerns about your course. A few suggestions now for if you would like to leave your comfort zone. Obviously, these are all completely optional, but if you want to challenge yourself, Perhaps if you're creating something outside of your course, you could engage in uh, NaNoWriMo if you're a creative writer. You could engage with 100 hours of code if you want to learn some programming or 30 days of yoga if you want to concentrate on exercise and relaxation. The point here is to find something that suits you that is an intense but time limited burst of developmental activity. This mode, this model of learning or of, of engaging with our activity allows you to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It really is very beneficial, but it means that you're not committing to something that is endless and will grind on forever. So a short burst of intense activity is more likely to succeed than a, a kind of general low level ongoing uh, learning goal. If you're using social media uh, as part of your academic studies, think about participating in or even setting up your own Twitter chat. Um, Twitter has lots of advantages and lots of disadvantages, but it can be very, very useful if you use it well. So have a look at Twitter chats and whether you would like to participate in one relevant to your course goals. Again, if you're using social media for personal reasons as well, Think about how much time you're spending on those sites. Of course, engage as much as you like in terms of your mental health and maintaining relationships, particularly um, during the pandemic months and possibly years. Um, but have a think about how you use social media constructively. Um, I would suggest setting aside uh, social media free time. So if you're reading or writing or doing something that is not related to social media, put your phone away, put it in a different room so you can't hear the notifications um, and do critically reflect on how much time you're spending on these sites um, and whether you could leverage that uh, and use that time more efficiently. When you're reading, don't read reactively. I would suggest that if you have PPD goals which require reading, that you set aside a time in the day when you do nothing else but read. Don't sit there with, with multiple browser windows open and your phone binging at you. Um, set aside a time when you do nothing but read and then you make notes as you're reading. So this is a way to develop good and undistracted reading habits. Um, you can't possibly fully concentrate on the 
the content of a piece of reading if you have multiple other things going on at the same time. If you're learning about things and this is one of your PPD goals, have a look at online courses. There are lots and lots of things that you have access to um, either through GSA or free online courses that can complement your learning. So if there's something that's highly aligned to your course goals, do have a look and see what else is out there. Finally, if you find that you're anxious about elements of your study, please do look at and use the student support service at GSA. Um, it is there for you, for you to use when you need it. So there's a link here, you can see the link, go to the link and look at the kind of support that is offered uh, and decide if you need to pursue um, support from the student support service. Okay, so your turn. I would like you at the end of this video to use this flowchart to briefly set yourself a learning goal. What, just one simple thing that you would like to learn right now. Work through the steps of the flowchart and plan for a goal that you're going to achieve with a timescale for when you're going to achieve it. The other thing I'd like you to do is go back and have a think about your extracurricular activities and have a think about whether you want to scholarify any of them. Is there anything, any of the suggestions that I've covered that you'd like to, to use? Is there anything that you'd like to maximise in terms of its efficiency for your learning journey? Don't, nobody's asking you to do something new, to, set, to start a new hobby, um, but have a think about which ones you do and which ones you do not want to turn into PPD exercises. Finally, there are some further resources that you might want to look at, uh, which I've collected together in a Padlet. The link is at the bottom of this slide, but here also is the direct link to the source of uh, a quite a useful handout on time management and another short booklet on self-management of expectations at university. These are quite useful handouts for managing your transition into higher education. I hope this was useful. Please do consider watching some of the, of the other videos in this series. Thanks for listening.